Delta, delta, delta. Let's separate out what we know from the science versus the hype on this episode of Shareable Science, Beyond the Blog. Welcome to Shareable Science. Science you can share. It's the beginning of August. COVID-19 is at the top of most of the news headlines and you're watching a Shareable Science Beyond the Blog. You could be forgiven if you thought that you had fallen into a time warp and it was now 2020. But fortunately, it is not 2020. And even though there's a bit of deja vu, we are in a very different situation today than a year ago. Let's look at the details. So obviously we're talking about the Delta variant. This is the specific scientific name, and it includes not only this version of the virus, but three sublineages, which are very, very similar, but they've acquired or uh, changed a couple of different mutations. AY1, AY2, and AY3. AY1 is sometimes called Delta Plus. You might have heard a lot of concern and hand-wringing about Delta Plus. There doesn't seem to be any difference between these in terms of their severity and transmission and the original Delta variant. So they all three get, all four of these get grouped under one heading of Delta. The Centers for Disease Control at the end of July, their estimate of the percentage of SARS-CoV-2 infections in America suggests that 93% of all U.S. cases are caused by this Delta variant and its sub lineages. This is the dominant version of the virus that is present here in the United States. We've seen it as the dominant version in other countries. For example, earlier this summer in the United Kingdom, earlier this spring in India where it was first identified. Why do we see it achieving dominance over the other variants? It likely has to do with the specific combination of genetic mutations that are found in the Delta variant, some of which we've seen in previous versions of viruses, viral variants, some of which are new or specifically unique to Delta. We know that this version, Delta, is twice as transmissible, twi it spreads twice as easily as the original version of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And it's about 50% more transmissible than the Alpha variant that we talked about earlier this year. We're not 100% certain about why. We know that some mutations make it more uh, able to latch tightly onto human cells to make that connection to infect those cells. We also know that there are some mutations that allow the virus to replicate itself more quickly. And in fact, a preprint that was uh, from a lab in China found that individuals who were infected with Delta had a thousand fold increase in the amount of virus present in their upper respiratory system. So if I can bind to cells more easily and I can produce a whole lot more of the virus, it's likely that that's what's driving the increased transmission. And it's why you're hearing about people that are becoming infected just in a matter of minutes of contact with someone with Delta instead of uh, you know, the 15 or 30 minutes that we traditionally have been talking about. It's not clear if the symptoms of the Delta variant are significantly different from the other prior versions of the virus. There's some suggestion that you might see more runny nose, that you might see less loss of taste and smell, but that's not definite yet. It's also not clear if this version of the virus is more severe, if it causes a more severe set of symptoms. We've got to have more data before we can answer either of those questions we can begin to look at the impact of our vaccines. And this is where 2020 and 2021 clearly diverge. The data that I'm gonna show you, the references for these are contained in the reference PDF that's in our show notes. And I would encourage you to take a look at that if you want more details, if you wanna dig deeper into the science. Protection seems to be holding pretty strong against getting seriously ill and being hospitalized or dying for people that have been vaccinated. That data seems to be showing up in the upper 80s and the lower 90s, not that different from what we saw with the clinical trials in the original version of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And this is what vaccines were designed to do was to keep people from getting seriously ill and out of the hospital to reduce the strain on our healthcare system. Where this virus seems to have gained some traction is in its ability to infect individuals even if they've been vaccinated. 
you're probably hearing about these breakthrough infections. These are people that have been vaccinated, have been exposed, and then test positive for the virus. In some cases, they even develop symptoms, generally mild, but not always. The number of breakthrough cases is still a very, very small percentage of the overall individuals that have been vaccinated. But because you've got over 166 million people that have been vaccinated, even a small percentage of that feels like a much larger number. So it's important to keep that denominator in mind. I'm seeing data that suggests that depending on the population being looked at, the protection that the vaccine affords against infection and mild symptoms is now somewhere in the upper 60s to the low 80%. There's one study out of Israel that actually has it much lower than that. It remains to be seen if that is, uh, is an outlier or if we're gonna begin seeing that in other groups. And it's part of why Israel has made the decision to begin adding a third vaccine dose to its most vulnerable populations. Even still, the CDC's most recent round of data suggests that individuals that have been vaccinated are at an eightfold lower level of developing infection, and they are 25-fold lower in their risk of being hospitalized or dying compared to someone that is not. So the vaccines are doing what they were designed to do, even in the midst of breakthrough infections. Now, there are two key questions that I am often asked in, in uh, specifically to the Delta variant. The first is what about prior immunity from someone who has had and recovered from COVID-19? And the data suggests that individuals that have recovered from COVID-19 have a pretty robust immune response. The question that we don't know is what is the impact of Delta? Does that response drop? We've seen at least one paper that suggested that the response, the natural immunity dropped with a different variant, with gamma. We don't have data yet that tell us about whether, just like with vaccination, you see a reduction from natural immunity. We're gonna have to wait for that. The other piece around that is if you look at a thousand people that have natural immunity, many of them, a large majority of them are gonna have a strong immune response, but several of them may have very little response. And right off the bat, we don't yet have a way to identify the strength of someone's immune response. That is something we desperately need, some sort of ability to tell who has strong protection and who doesn't. And it is more than just looking at the antibody level. And then the last question that I'm asked is we've seen Delta in other countries rise quickly and then fall off almost as quickly. Will that happen here in the United States? That's an open question. We'll, we'll know it when it happens, but there are a lot of models that suggest we should expect that kind of rapid rise and then rapid drop. The timing of that is open. I've seen things that talk about the middle of August, the middle of September, or the middle of October. That's a large eight week window. Again, we'll know when we come through the other side. That's an open question still. I feel like in this video, just like in so many of the other ones, I've said that's an open question an awful lot. If you've watched any of these, you know that, the, that this virus, and certainly the Delta variant, has a lot of nuance. So there's our content. A specific set of genetic mutations that increase transmissibility. Vaccinations are doing their job against serious illness, but you are seeing breakthrough. And some of those breakthrough cases are capable of infecting other people. We don't yet know if that's really, really rare or if that's a little bit more common. And then we wait to see what the time course of Delta is. I hope you find this useful. Please share this with others. As always, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate that you took the time to click on this video. Take care.